Hey everybody, welcome to SI.com. I'm David Gardner and this is Wooden Watch, where each week we interview a player of the year contender in college basketball. This week we are pleased to welcome Jonathan Motley, a redshirt junior for Baylor, who is averaging a near double-double at 16.2 points and 9.8 rebounds per game. Jonathan, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, thank you all for having me. So I want to go back to the beginning of your Baylor career. You played high school basketball in Houston, and even though you had a few other high major offers, you decided to play close to home so that your mom could come to most of your games. Looking back at that decision now, how important has it been for you to have your mother nearby? Oh, very important. Uh, you know, she's, uh, she's my everything. And uh, uh, without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. So uh, I just made, made sure she can come to every game. and. Uh, that Houston's about two and a half hours from here, so she, she does spend a lot of time in Waco, so I'm thankful for that. Has she been to every game? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, she, even this year, she's coming to a lot of away games. She came to the Kansas game at Kansas, and she came to the Bahamas. So I'm thankful for, for her just being able to just kind of support me through this. I'm sure that the Bahamas was a real sacrifice that she had to make to come down and see you play there, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, you've said before that your older sister was the reason that you started playing basketball. She's 18 years older than you. What kind of influence did she have on you as you were growing up and learning the game? Uh, I mean, just growing up and just playing little shooting games against her, you know, just she was a really good shooter. So just being able to just go in the gym and shoot against her and things like that as I was younger. And I started getting taller, so she couldn't really beat me anymore. So. Uh, it was just a good thing just being able to play the game with her, you know, and learn from her. When was the last time that you say that she beat you one-on-one? -on -one? I honestly can't even remember. A long time ago. A long time ago. Now... I, I start growing, she couldn't really handle it no more. <laughs> I'm sure. Now, uh, you came into college, you are pretty skinny, and you redshirted your freshman year, but you were going up against guys like Corey Jefferson, Isaiah Austin, Rico Gathers in practice. How challenging was that, and what did you learn from playing against those guys? Uh, I learned a lot. You know, it, it just kind of got a different feel for it. a lot of different games with those guys. You know, Isaiah, he's more uh, perimeter-oriented, you know, really skilled. Uh, you got Corey Jefferson, who's super athletic, you know, uh, plays above the rim, and then you got Rico, who's a bruiser, you know, so uh, it's just a lot of different games I had to learn from, you know, and, and just the best of both worlds you, I get playing against those guys every day, and just Rico got me a lot more physical, being able to uh, hang out in the paint and be able to bang down there and get rebounds and things like that. Isaiah helped me with my perimeter game, and, you know, Corey helped me finishing against the rim, you know, Corey's always dunking in practice, and just dunking, he tried to dunk everything from no matter where, where he at, so pretty who, crazy. Who was the toughest guy to go up against in those practices? I mean, you called Rico a bruiser. I have a feeling that he is the toughest guy. I mean, he's playing in the NFL now. Oh, yeah, for sure, uh, especially when we do those rebounding drills. Uh, you know, Rico, take, take those to heart, you know. Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he's, a, he's a monster, man. He's crazy strong, you know, getting thrown around the court with him all day, man. It was, it was a grind. For sure. Now, you ended up starting every game of your freshman season, but then you came off the bench for all but nine of the last 11 games as a sophomore. What was your reaction at the beginning of last season when Coach Drew told you that that was going to be the plan for you to come off the bench? And what was that experience like? Um, well, it was kind of tough at first, just kind of figuring out what my role was because I started every game of freshman year, so I thought I was just going to come in next year and just kind of uh, take on a bigger role, be the guy, you know, but uh, TP who had such a great year, so I had to take a seat back and let TP kind of do his thing because uh, he, he was having an awesome year. So it was just basically just kind of feeling around, just trying to see where I fit in, you know, just coming off the bench, trying to bring energy, bring some pro uh, production scoring-wise and different things like that. A lot of guys say when they come off the bench that they get a different feel for the game. Did that happen for you? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a different feel from starting, for sure. Because uh, you kind of get, kind of see where the game is going already once you're uh, on the bench. You kind of get to just watch and see how everybody's moving, how, everybody, how everything is going, you know, what plays the other team's running. So it just kind of, you kind of get to sit back and, and learn first and then kind of step into the fire after that. But once you start, you know, you're out there, you're going through the, mo through the motions, you you're out there uh, just kind of controlling the game from the start. So it's, just, it's definitely a different feel for sure. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that you came into college skinny. You were probably about 200 pounds. You're 230 now, uh, and I read that you have 6.3% body fat, which is super impressive. Do you feel like you're yeah. still growing physically, or are you happy with where you are right now? Oh, yeah, I'm still growing. Um, my weight kind of fluctuates. Like, I got up to, like, 246 uh, a couple months ago before the season started. So it just kind of goes up and down. Like, I was 240 last week. Uh, it just kind of goes up and down. But I like playing uh, the 240 frame. You know, big guy kind of being able to move people out the way, you know, just kind of do my own thing. Uh, I definitely owe all this. Uh, Coach Charlie did a great job with me. We lifted weights, like, every day during my red shirt year. Just made sure I put on as much uh, muscle as possible. Now, on the court this season, you've increased your scoring average, your rebound average, you're even doubled up on your assists from last year. What's the improvement of your game that you're most proud of this season? Uh, really staying out of foul trouble. I had a bad problem with that last year. Uh, I'll come into the game, even coming off the bench, play like the first two minutes and then have to sit right back down for foul trouble. So I did a good job of uh, making sure I stay out of foul trouble and rebounding for sure. Uh, I try to go out in every game, make sure I grab at least 10 boards. You know, that's, I, that's just my that's my goal I set for myself. Uh, the scoring going to come, but I just really try to focus on rebounding this year for sure. I was going to say that the aspect of your game that has really stood out to me is defensive rebounding. I think you were always really good on the offensive glass, but you've really picked it up on the defensive side. Is that something that you worked on specifically? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, me and my uh, assistant coaches just kind of did some – uh, some studying just about how I can get more defense rebounds and basically I'm just being able to just go grab them off the top of the rim really uh, just hop pointing the ball as high as I can go get it rather than trying to box out and just kind of wait for the ball to come to me so if it's out of my area I just kind of jo try to go high point it uh, basically that's really what I do yeah now, the last two games, notwithstanding, you guys are having a really special season. You were unranked in the preseason, number one at points this season, still a top 10 team throughout. Within your team, what were the expectations like in the preseason? Well, the preseason was a grind here for us. Uh, we came to work every day because uh, we knew we were going to be pretty good. Uh, we just had to buy in, everyone bought in, and now we're having a, such a, a pretty good season. So. Um, it's honestly just a testament to our team chemistry, how everyone just bought, bought into the same goal. You know, we have our goals that we're trying to achieve, and uh, I can generally say everybody's really bought into those goals. And from the top to the bottom, man, I think that's what makes us different from uh, other teams. As I mentioned a second ago, you guys are coming off a couple of tough games. Most recently was a two-point loss at Kansas State two NCAA tournament teams that you lost to by just a combined five points. What have you guys focused on in the aftermath, and what are the big lessons that you're taking away from those two losses? Um, with turnovers. Uh, we got to cut, cut on our turnovers for sure. Uh, that's kind of been plaguing us a little bit throughout the Big 12. So uh, we've been working on practice and looking at film and making sure we can cut down on those because uh, we have a really good offense. Defense is really good. So uh, once we cut down on those turnovers, I think they'll really bring us over the top. Now, the last two seasons, you guys have been upset in the NCAA tournament, first by Georgia State, last year by Yale. What would it mean you, to you not only to get into the NCAA tournament again this year, but to make a deep tournament run? Man, it'll mean a lot, you know, because uh, this is Ish's senior year. So uh, really, we're just trying to do it for him because he deserves the best, you know, because he's such a great leader. Uh, everything he does on the court and off the court for us, man, he's an amazing leader, amazing captain. So uh, he deserves for everyone to just play their hearts out and uh, whatever happens, happens, and uh, I guarantee you that's what we're going to do. We're going to play our hearts out and uh, hopefully we can make a deep run. Uh, you know, like I said, everyone's bought into the goals from top to the bottom. So that, uh, that usually shows when you're playing these, those tough uh, NCAA tournament games. Now, finally, I ask this question of everyone who comes on the show. If you had a vote for player of the year this season, but you couldn't choose yourself, who would you pick? Uh, I think I'm going to stay with the big two. I think Frank Mason's having an amazing year. Uh, the things he's doing for that team and uh, the improvements he made. So Frank Mason, I think, would be my pick.